Hacksaw Ridge, the season finale is finally here, guys. This mock is complete. Over 50,000 parts to make up this mock. Over 200 minifigures on this mock. Over 10 vehicles. This mock is insane. 45 episodes. Guys, I started this back in February of 2021, which was last year, and we are finally done. So make sure you guys like the video, comment down below, and subscribe because I will be picking the winner for these two mock minifigures. These are directly pulled off of this mock, and these are also available for sale on my website. Link in the description. If you guys want a minifigure that came directly off this mock, and package signed by me and hand numbered. You guys can either get a Japanese or an American soldier. It's the best way to support me and what I do through my business, Brick Tactical. But guys, this mock is done. I'm so excited to bring you up close and personal with everything that I've added from the last episode. I've added a lot of details, spent a lot, thousands, probably, maybe not thousands, but hundreds of hours on this mock building this. And I'm so excited with how it turned out. So guys, little items if you will. So there's five little Easter eggs. One of them is a Japanese hidden sniper, a long lost soldier I'm calling him, the Dark Lord, a Jawa, and then a backseat driver. So those are kind of cliche names for some of the things that you're going to find in this mock for Easter eggs. If you guys want to go through and watch the video and try to find those five things, drop them in the comments, put some timestamps. And uh, it's just a fun little scavenger hunt for you guys. Let me grab the camera, get close, and let's show you guys Hacksaw Ridge in Lego. Here's one more up close look at these minifigures. They are gonna be signed on the back. They're gonna be numbered, so I gotta count how many Japanese and American are on the mock, and I'll put those down there in that little white box. But like I said, these are on the website, guys. And all of these will come with a random torso and head because some of the figures on the mock, they obviously don't have all the same torso and head. So it's a complete minifigure for each. Check those out. Link in the description. All right, guys, let's go to the mock. All right, the moment you guys have all been waiting for, we're going to go ahead and get in depth with this mock. This is truly insane. This took me so long to do all the finishing touches, but I'm so happy with the results. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go all the way back here and we're gonna start off at the beach. So once again, I do wanna reiterate to all the people that might just be seeing this video, this is based off of the Hacksaw Ridge movie and this is also obviously based off the battle itself. But like I've said throughout this whole series, I'm not trying to make this historically accurate. This is loosely based off of that. You know, obviously we have the giant cliff, the Japanese versus the Americans, the Americans climbing up the net, et cetera, et cetera. But there are a lot of elements that are not accurate. For example, some tanks, you know, certain palm trees and whatnot. But I wanted it to look good and just have fun with the mock and use some of the parts and building techniques that I have to my disposal. So just letting you guys know that right off the bat. But let's go ahead and start off with the beach. So the beach is roughly two, ba two gray base plates by two gray base plates. So it's a very large display just for the beach. And I love, absolutely love doing this loose water technique. So this is just using some of the trans light blue studs and you just kind of set them in there and it looks really good. So I'm really excited about that. And what we've got going on here is we've got a Higgins boat coming in with American troops. We've got a Sherman amphibious tank. Now the reason it's an amphibious tank is because you have the ported exhaust higher up. So if it is underwater, it can still, it won't flood the engine basically. So we've got that. There's an up close look at that. So you got those long, big exhaust pipes right there looking awesome. And then we've got a couple other American vehicles. We got a wheelies Jeep. We've got a Stuart tank, some more Jeeps back there. We'll get to those here in a second, but let's take a look at these minifigures here. So we've got some minifigures here. We've got this American with a trench gun and a Thompson coming in to help out the battle. And one cool little technique is you just take off the leg pieces and you just set the minifigure down on the water like so. And it kind of looks like he's swimming or he's wading in the water. So cool little technique there. And then I've shown this off quite a few times. This is really cool. Taking some transparent pieces and building kind of like this mushroom shaped. And what it's simulating is like a mortar round hitting the water and then throwing water up. So we have those and you can see their various heights and uh, we got some back here as well. And it just adds a little bit of color to the water. It definitely adds a lot of contrast being having you know a blue water and then the white. And then we've got the Sherman tank having some tread marks there or pushing the water up there. And then of course, along the main coastline, we've got the, uh, whatchamacallit, the clear studs there to simulate waves crashing on the beach and the sand itself. And then obviously we have 
dark tan and then it transitions to light tan to simulate wet sand going to lighter dry sand. And so we've got, once again, this tank here. We've got my Brick Tactical M2 machine gun up there. We got the guy standing behind it manning that. We've actually got another one here on this wheelies Jeep, which is pretty cool. So once again, we've got some more foot soldiers here coming in to support the ongoing battle. We've got the Stuart tank here. We've got a guy riding on the back, another M2 up there. We got the cool little American flag brick built on the side of the Stuart tank. I really like that simple little detail. We've got some sand that the treads are kicking up there as well. Now, one thing I saw someone comment on my last video was add some explosions to the beach because it wouldn't really make sense to just have explosions in the water and none on the beach. And I totally agree with that. And so what I went ahead and did was I added a bunch of explosions down here. Once again, this is part of the mock that's not necessarily accurate to the movie or the actual battle, but it adds color to the mock, which I think is very important. So we've got the Higgins boat back here looking great, looking awesome. Long Higgins boat there with a bunch of minifigures in there, a bunch of U.S. Army soldiers coming out. We even got a little wheelie Jeep there. That's an older design of mine. It's a much smaller design than my new version here. This is actually on my website. You can check that out, link in the description. And so we've got some more Jeeps kind of fanning out. And we've got a lot going on over here. We'll get to that in a second. But we've got more explosions. Once again, we're using those like they're, I don't know, like shrub pieces and they're in just normal tan. And what I do is I take flame pieces and I kind of stick them in the sides. I stick one in the center and then we use some along the edges and just kind of add some fire and flames to make it look really cool and make the colors really pop. We've also got some loose sand here where the main door of the Higgins boat kind of fell down. You can see on the sides there. We've got some loose sand just kind of, you know, as that big heavy steel door slams down on the beach, it's going to throw up some sand. So we've got that. We've even got a medic soldier in there. And so moving around, we got actually, I forgot these two guys. We've got these two guys coming in as well. So a lot of troops coming in from the water. And then we kind of move forward. We've got the Stuart tank with some more soldiers here. And let's, once again, I'll save this for a second. Let's go back here. We've got some more wheelies jeeps fanning out there. More just U.S. soldiers. Let's zoom in on those. We got some with some M1 Grands there. We've got these guys driving these Jeeps. Or a little bit different style of a Jeep. They have the canopy. We've got this guy with his M1 carbine showing up. And then back here we've got the deuce in the half. And so we've got a bunch of different cargo being unloaded. A bunch of weapons crates. Loose weapons. There's an M2 sticking in there. We've got some more M1 Grands. These guys are just kind of pulling out M1 Grands. Passing them out. We've got this guy here kind of walking around, probably looking for a rifle to go help out. Let's see if I can get down low here and uh, you guys can see some stuff in there. Um, maybe a little Easter egg in there. So yeah, bunch of figures back there just unloading gear. And then we've got more guys over there. And let's go ahead and jump to the front here. So we've got kind of like a little wound in section. And this is obviously a big part of the movie is we have, I'm going to skip ahead here, but we have the main man Desmond Doss right there that's actually a minifigure you can also buy on my website link in the description so we got desmond doss there let me make sure i focus on him there we go and then he's got this little makeshift like hoist if you will and going down on top of it or hooked onto the end of it we have some stretchers with some wounded soldiers we've even got another guy that they're coming in and they're helping out carry he's bleeding right there to give to him to lower him down and then here are some of the guys that are starting to pile up that Desmond Doss has saved. So obviously, if you don't know the story behind Desmond Doss, definitely do a quick Google search. Very cool story, very inspiring. And then we've got, so we've got just a blank stretcher there waiting for someone. We've got a medic here. You can see his medic helmet there. He's helping out that wounded soldier. We've got this guy down here that's handing his buddy a, a puff of a cigarette just to calm him down. So we've got that down there. And then once again, this is inaccurate but it looks cool, so that's why I did it. We've got some captured Japanese soldiers, both here and here. We've got this guy here that is uh, holding up his 1911, making sure they don't do anything crazy. So we've got a whole bunch of Japanese figures there, and we've got their pile of Arasakas, and one of them had a samurai sword, so they confiscated that. And then moving down here, we've got this guy here with the shotgun, making sure these guys don't do anything, and make sure they keep moving along. And they even captured a kamikaze pilot, which... Once again, this is a little bit of role play. I highly doubt you could capture a kamikaze pilot, but they sure did, and they're 
I'm sure they're going to question him and try to find out some information from them. So we've got all these guys pushed up against this massive two foot tall rock structure here. So if you guys don't remember, this mock is actually completely hollow in here. This first section is pretty much solid, but the back section, we'll show that later in the video, is actually completely hollow. I can actually reach my hand like all the way down here, and that's because it's held up by wood. So in the like maybe around episode 15 to 20 ish range, I showed the reasoning why I did that. Basically, I didn't want to spend all the money and time building all of this up. So it's actually hollow. It's just two pieces of plywood and then some spacers in there. And it made building this a lot quicker, a lot cheaper. And it you wouldn't know unless I told you. So that's what's really cool about it. So this giant rock structure definitely took the longest amount of my time. It's a uh, Pretty extensive to do rock structure like this, to make it look organic, to make it look good, it takes a lot of time. And you know, me running my business and doing everything else, it's very hard to find time, but hey, we got it done. And I'm actually really excited with how it looks. I think it turned out great because if you guys look up pictures of this battle or watch the movie that this was based off of, it's very apparent that this was not just kind of like a generic curved back wall. This was very much a almost vertical cliff. And if we look at a complete side view, I did a really good job of that. There's not much curvature to it. It's almost straight up. There's a slight curve at the top, but I think it looks really good. It's something I've never tried before because you can see there's a lot of blank spaces here, you know, all throughout here. But adding these slopes like I did, it kind of breaks that up. So I'm really excited with how that turned out. And uh, I hope you guys are as well. So moving on to all of the Americans down here. We've got all these guys that pitched up some ladders. And then the famous net that you see in the video, or not the video, the movie, of all the Americans climbing up. So we got all these soldiers climbing up here. And we've got these guys trying to get up top. And once they get up top, they are met with a crazy battle that we'll get to here in a couple minutes. So let's go ahead and keep going over here. So we kind of already talked about what's going on with Desmond Doss right here. Just a couple of the scenes. This was another scene that I wanted to recreate. This was right when they got to the top after this had been bombarded by naval ships. There was like some rock like pillars that a bunch of the guys got up. And they kind of just hid behind and kind of waited for more people to get up. And it was like kind of a... A very uh, tense moment, if you will. And so I kind of wanted to recreate that. So we have a couple guys that are kind of making sure everything's, you know, coast is clear before they get going. And so this guy's helping these guys up as well. Everyone's got their M1 pod helmets on, of course. Brick tactical, brick tactical. I don't know why I repeated myself. Brick tactical, M1 pod helmets. And then we're moving up to the battlefield. We've got a lot of barbed wire here. That's what all these little chain pieces are representing. And then we've got just a bunch of chaos going on. So I'm really excited and I'm just glad how this turned out as far as how chaotic it is. Because in the movie, it is just crazy. Once the bullets start flying in the movie, it is very, very crazy what's going on. So I think I represented that very well. And so if we go ahead and let's go ahead and I'm going to do a cut and we'll get in closer with some of these Americans up top. All right, starting off with this medic here helping out this wounded soldier. You can see he dropped his M1 Grand and he's currently bleeding out there, but I think that medic will take care of him. We've got a bunch of, like I said, barbed wire, a lot of rocks back here. We talked about these throughout the building series, a lot of dark tan accents with the olive green parts. I really love that combination. And let's see here, how do I wanna attack this? Let's go ahead and actually show the back section first. So we've got a guy set up an M2 there and he is currently trying to take out, if you can see, there's a bunch of Japanese soldiers coming up. So he's setting that up. We've got a guy helping him out there. A couple more soldiers there running up to help. These guys look like they're pretty involved with the firefight. This guy is taking cover behind this down palm tree with his Thompson. Once again, he sees that fleet of Japanese soldiers pushing up here. So he's trying to give them covering fire for this medic that is trying to help this down soldier. We've got another guy running up there. Another down American over there. Another one there. You know, a lot of carnage going on right here. We've got this guy hiding behind this bush with his M1 Grand out taking shots. His face doesn't look very, you know, confident, but I hopefully he's... Uh, <laughs> participating in the fight we've got this guy here right off the bat just gets mowed down by fire and is just hiding behind this rock hoping someone helps him more guys running up with 
combination of M1 Grands, M1 Carbines. This guy's got a 1919 that he's probably going to go try to set up and really give some sustained fire. This guy here just totally got shot from the front, fell down on the barbed wire with his grease gun. He's not having a good day there. What else we got here? We've got these guys here. I don't know how this guy thinks he has time to talk. This guy's taking cover behind uh, this trunk of the palm tree there. We've got more guys moving up here. This guy with his M1 carving taking some shots. More guys moving up. And so one of the things that I kind of wanted to do in this, once again, this isn't accurate, but if you can't see it from kind of a broad perspective using the colors of the minifigures, you know, it's really easy to tell the two apart with their different uniforms, but the Americans came up here and they're kind of doing a flank situation. You can see they come all the way over here and they're trying to like cut off. And I think in my head they were trying to wrap around this Shinhodo tank, which is kind of cool. It's kind of camouflaged in there. So they're trying to wrap around this tank and we'll get to these figures here in a second. But the Japanese are kind of seeing what's happening and trying to do the opposite. So they're trying to come around the far left side over there and that's why that guy set up the M2 to really try to make that not happen to try to really mow those guys down and make that just not be able to get punched through so moving up to these guys let's actually take a broad shot of the mock here you can see all these palm trees look gorgeous I absolutely love this design it is basically you take a brick modified with the studs on all of the sides there I don't know if I can get it to focus there we go and you add cheese slopes upside down and you kind of do a quarter turn rotate on each little assembly and then you put palm trees at the top um, or leaves at the top and it looks great and what I did with these is I actually kind of purposely bent them so it looks kind of like they're leaning over like a palm tree does you know it goes up with a little bit of a curve and so I really like this design I saw this on Flickr back in the good old days and uh, absolutely love that design so I'm gonna always use that for my palm tree design so that's kind of what's going on. We got the Americans going around to this left side here of the mock. And uh, moving up to this here, we've got another guy with an M1 carbine that just totally got mowed down. We've got more guys moving up here. This guy's taking some serious cover behind that little bush and tree. He's actually got a pretty good spot there, hiding from the kind of blind side of this Shinhodo tank over here. Now, this guy, on the other hand, is putting in some work. He's got the flame trooper, or not the flame trooper, flame thrower, and he just totally torched these three Japanese soldiers. So as you can see, these Japanese soldiers are not having a good day and they are totally on fire. And let's get a good shot above here. There you go. You can see all these guys just run away. This guy fell down and just totally, everyone's burning alive. Very not fun situation to be in. And then moving up here, let's get a good look at that Shinhodo tank. So this is a tank that I've used in my other Japanese build, Battle of Palilu. Once again, not the most accurate Taxar Ridge, but an awesome build. You know, really cool tank. I've done a video of this on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. And uh, this was designed by my good buddy Elliot, Lego Guy 830 And I went ahead and built this. And uh, such a cool tank. One of my favorites. Always going to keep that thing around. Maybe one day I'll make that a kit. Might be kind of cool. The camo scheme is a little hard to do, but uh, it might be possible. So we've got that rolling up here really it you can see the way it's aimed it's aimed directly at the source so the source being where these americans are coming from so it's probably trying to shoot those guys out first and then it figures it could probably take out the guys that are already up here because if you can take out this all you got to do is handle the rest of them and you're done if you cut off that supply so that's kind of what's going on up here and uh let's take a dive in here these palm tree leaves are kind of hard to film around but we'll make it work so we've got this guy that just totally got I don't know what happened to him. He got cut in half or something, but his legs are detached from his torso and he is currently bleeding. We've got these guys here, which I think is really cool. Um, obviously not cool that they're dying, but the effect that I did, if you see these little studs here, I took a white stud and stacked some clear studs on them and I kind of made a fan out of shots. And then I sticky tacked some cylinders on these guys. And if you see like on this guy, if I zoom in, I did one on the front and one on the back. So you can see the bullets went straight through and you can see these guys probably got taken out by the machine gun on the tank. So they just totally mowed these guys down. And then this guy, like I said, I don't know what happened to him. We've got another wounded Japanese soldier there. This guy's just straight up running. He says, I'm out. I'm done. And uh, one thing I you will see throughout the mock is there's some Japanese soldiers that don't have weapons. And then there are some that do. And... A lot of the wounded or dead Japanese soldiers on the ground, you know, for example, like this guy here, um, there's a couple more back here we'll show in a second. 
they don't have like weapons next to them. For example, like all of the Americans, they have weapons next to them. And the reasoning for that is I've heard about this in World War II documentaries, but since the, uh, whatchamacallit, the later years of the war, the Japanese just didn't have the time and resources to make new rifles and, you know, machine guns and whatnot. And so the Japanese would just simply pick up the rifles and weapons of their wounded, you know, comrades, if you will, and would just pick them up and go straight back into the fight. So that's kind of what I'm simulating here. So I think it looks kind of cool. It's one of those little, like, te not Easter eggs, but um, just little tidbits. So that's what's going on here. We've got another explosion going on in the back there. Let's see if we can get, you know, in here with this camera. We've got more Japanese soldiers coming up the front lines. You can see that's kind of what I was talking about. These guys are just pushing up along the other side. There's another little Easter egg right there, what that Japanese soldier is holding. So that's kind of cool. We've got this machine gunner. So this is a little bit further back from the M2 that the Americans have all the way over there. It's a little bit further back, but we've got a sandbag set up with a, uh, I don't remember, I think it's a Type 99 or the Type, I can't remember it. It's, it's one of the heavier bipod mounted machine guns and he's kind of hidden behind all of these shrubs and we've got even more Japanese rolling up. We've even got a commander there with his samurai sword, very cool. And then behind this tank, we've got some dark tan uniforms. So we've got this guy with another samurai sword and a printed helmet running up there. We've got these two guys running up in their dark tan uniforms as well. So these guys are using the tank as their cover to try to push up behind it and uh, do the best that they can. So let's go ahead and take a look at this right here. So these Americans, like I said, these guys are pushing up. We've got a guy with a Thompson, another Thompson, another shotgunner. We've got this guy here that's sitting down, taking some shots. He probably just shot at this guy. And then this guy is taking cover behind this down palm tree, which I think is a really cool touch. We've got these two guys that have pushed up as far as they can with, you know, comfort. And they're hiding behind these two shrubs. There's actually a Japanese soldier right there downed. And then we've got this guy rolling up here with his M1 Grand. And we've got this guy that is going head to head with this Japanese guy. And I don't think he won that fight. So that's a cool little detail of how I pose the arm on that Japanese figure. And then if you separate the body from the legs, you can kind of stick the samurai sword through it and I added some blood. I think that was a really cool detail right there. So I do sell those samurai swords and other accessories on my website as well. So you can check those out. So once again, lots of palm trees. And what I tried to do is at the base of every palm tree, if you notice at the base, I tried to make it more heavily populated with greenery, like there would be a water source of some kind and it just looks good. So all the bases of these palm trees, you can see there's quite a bit of greenery going on and then there's less and less in between. So I think that's a really good touch. You can see that there as well. And so we've got another palm tree right here. We've got just a lot of greenery going around this bunker. We'll get to that here in a second. We've got more Japanese soldiers with their Arasakas rolling up here. Everyone's just going straight to the front lines. They're just trying to stop this American advance. And uh, it's, I don't know, someone came over to my house and was looking at this mock and asked a very interesting question because it's a simple question, is who's winning in this battle? And that's a great question. You know, you guys can debate that in the comments down below. Um, I think I forgot to show you guys these two guys here. One guy's getting totally ran over by the tank. We've got this guy here. That's kind of using a cool gem piece as he got shot straight in the front there. So let's see here. I'm trying not to miss any minifigures for you guys. We've got these two Americans back there. Let's see here. We've got... All these Japanese pushing up behind this gunner, kind of using him as cover. We've got something crazy going on back there. I don't know what's going on back there. Um, so we've got all this, and then we've got more down palm trees. I think that's a really cool touch. You know, when you're building with Lego, you got to think, especially when you're building landscapes and whatnot, you got to think, okay, not everything's perfect, right? So not all these palm trees should be standing upright. Some should be you know, f falling over, people should be using them as cover. So I really like, you know, doing stuff like that. Same when it comes to rock work, you really got to think organically and you got to make it just look as almost, it's hard to make something look random, as weird as that sounds, especially with Lego, because everything's kind of 90 degree corners. So when I can take a palm tree like this and instead of connecting it to anything, I just literally lay it down at an angle like this, it really looks good. So stuff like that, 
is just cool little building techniques. You can see we've got another down Japanese soldier missing his rifle there. One of these guys might have picked it up. And then we've got the two bunkers back here. So we've got that destroyed bunker and we've got this intact bunker. You know, we got we could argue in the comments why one of them's exploded and one's not. This one's a little more camouflaged than this one. So, and this one's a little larger, so maybe this one's a little more heavily fortified. And in Hacksaw Ridge, the movie, if I'm remembering it correctly, I haven't watched it in a while, but they did a total naval bombardment of this first. So this could have been hit by one of those. And so what we got going on back here is this light bluish gray bunker here, just completely busted open on the corner. We got explosions coming out the corner there, rubble, all sorts of stuff. We've got a Japanese soldier that didn't make it that's still inside. We've got this guy running out. We've got another, if you guys can see it in there, we've got a down Japanese soldier that probably got burned and just ran out. So we've got all of that going on. We've got the cool camouflage leaves up top. And it's kind of built into the hillside, which I thought was really cool, especially you can see that on this one. You know, it's actually kind of hard to see, especially from this angle. You only see a little bit of light bluish gray. And one thing that I added was there's a lot of like holes and seams and all sorts of randomness to the build to make the concrete look like it's been, you know, shot at or old or starting to crumble. So I really like that look. And then I even added some sand um, tan color pieces on top like maybe they push some sand over the top to camouflage it We got more of these leaf pieces here. We've got another Japanese machine gunner just straight up Mowing down people from the top roof. I'm not really sure he might be looking directly down this line of sight and probably trying to take out Some of these guys back here. So that's kind of a cool line of sight He's definitely got the height advantage and if we actually we can take this roof off if I'm careful just like this and we can actually, there's a little bit of an interior. There's nothing crazy going on, but we've got a couple things. So we've got two Japanese soldiers there sticking their rifles out and uh, going to work there. You can see, I think it's kind of cool to see their little rifle barrels sticking out there. So these guys are probably taking out some of these American soldiers like this guy right here and whatnot. And we've actually got just a little crate in there, nothing crazy, but we've got, this is kind of a funny Easter egg. We've got a propaganda poster. This is one of my products that I sell. And this is actually from the American. So this is a this is an American propaganda poster from like the more of the European theater because it's showing German. So I think it's kind of a funny Easter egg that maybe the Japanese found this or had this as, you know, I wouldn't say a souvenir, but maybe as just some intelligence or they just simply had it or found it on the battlefield. So just something kind of funny there to put in there. And so, yeah, that's kind of cool. This just comes off and uh, it looks really good when it's closed and it has a cool little interior. So really cool bunker there. And you guys can see how this is built, right? There's a little bit of an angle here and then the bunker is built straight into the hillside. That was a very challenging thing to do. I remember building all of this and all of this. That took a lot of time. But as you can see, it actually looks pretty natural in here once I added, you know, some leaves and detailing pieces. So I'm really excited about how that turned out. And let's go ahead and take a little bit of a step back and look at this giant dark bluish gray wall. So this is comprised of two pieces mainly. We got two by fours and then we've got, these are one by two by five bricks. Now there's kind of pros and cons to both of them. Two by fours are I wouldn't say they're more expensive. It kind of depends on where you get them. Luckily, I had most of these 2x4s on hand already, but I did have to end up ordering more because I ended up building all of this first, and then I built this giant rock wall. So there was a couple things that were maybe out of order, but either way, I had to buy more of those. The 1x2s are nice because they go up vertically, but as you can see here, they're kind of kind of fragile there. And let's take a look at the back of the mock. We're kind of going a little bit out of order, but you can see this is literally all hollow. I'm using it as storage right now for products, but it goes all the way down there. I don't know if you guys can see it. You can actually see the light from the end of it. Let's see if I can get down in here. You guys can see in there a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. You can see the two by fours that are the real two by fours, the real wooden two by fours holding up everything. And then we just got this plywood that's holding up everything. And we've got plywood down here and you can see just kind of a basic wood structure, nothing crazy. And then we've got the base plates up top. And then we've got this giant two by four wall that is connected. There's actually base plates underneath this and uh, it's actually all connected and tied together. So it's quite strong actually. This front wall you can see is very wobbly, 
but uh, it's definitely intact. Now, one thing that was a little bit harder to do was this top section, and the reasoning for that is this mock is this height all the way down here. So you can see where the seam is right there, all the way down. So that's the height of the mock right there, but all of this starting here had to be built up. And so what I had to do was I took all these different struts and just support brick and just built it up. And I think it's what, however many bricks tall this is, maybe three, four, five, six, seven, maybe around 10 bricks tall and use 16 by 16 plates. So this is a bunch of smaller plates here that is all elevated up. So this isn't as strong because I can flex it a little bit, but it was something I needed to do to get this kind of slope look and then have a larger elevated section. So it is what it is. That definitely took a lot of time, but yeah, I think it turned out really good. So for everyone that has watched the full series, and if you haven't, definitely check the playlist in the description or in the card section and rewatch it. But this was kind of a pain point, you know, a little bit of history on the mock. This was kind of a pain point figuring out what do we put up on this elevated section. I knew I wanted to have some kind of transition because the other alternative was to not have this and just have this completely flat all the way through. And I didn't like that for two reasons. One, this distance already felt like a very large battlefield. I didn't think it needed to be that much you know, longer. For example, if we had the bunkers all the way back here, I think that would just be way too far to the front lines up here. So that was the main reason. And the other reason was I didn't want it just to be a bunch of rectangles. If I kind of step back, you know, I didn't want it to be this, then straight up, and then just straight back. I wanted to, it to have one more kind of layer to it. So we kind of have the beach, we have the top of the cliff, and then we have the top of like the hill, if you will. And so that's why I wanted to do it, and I'm very glad we did. But it still came down to what do we put up here. A lot of people were talking about, you know, do an airfield, do, you know, what were some of the other suggestions? Airfield was a big one like mortars and whatnot, that wasn't a bad option. And then there wasn't really too many great ideas that stood out to me, and I just couldn't think of any. So airfield didn't make sense, because that's like completely not even close to being accurate to the Hacksaw Ridge series. Um, I know we are straying away from it already, but that's really pushing the limits. And so then I decided, let's just go ahead and start adding some rocks and kind of like parts of mountains because I figured in my head maybe this kept going back and then there was a large mountain. So it's starting to get more rocky and then there's a mountain, you know, use your imagination back there. So we started doing that. I started doing the layout for all of these different rocks and kind of like, I don't know, this is just a big rock or kind of a berm. And you guys seem to really like it. So I went ahead and ran with it and you guys seem to like it and it adds a lot of color, which I really like too. So it kind of takes the same dark bluish gray coloring that we have from up front and it adds it in the back and it kind of ties everything together. So I'm pretty excited with how it turned out. What we did was, like I said, I just kind of did the layout of everything, asked what you guys thought. You guys said, go ahead and try it. And so I went ahead and finished all of these boulders here. I think it looks really good. We added a lot of bamboo pieces all around it. We added all sorts of shrubs and whatnot to kind of break up all the gray. And uh, we added a lot of tiles to the tops of these and uh, just trying to make them a little bit smoothed over. And overall, I'm really excited. This one's probably my favorite. This big one in the back here, and then also this kind of longer shaped one. I really like the look of that. So we've got all of that. And uh, like I said, it brings some more color to the mock, and I really think it looks good, so I'm excited we did it. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at all the minifigures up on this hill section. We got a lot of Japanese figures up here. We got a lot going on up here, so let's go ahead. We'll start. Let's actually, yeah, let's start in this front corner here. So we've got all of these rocks, and like I said, these turned out great. We've got a lot of greenery going on. Up top here, it's a combination of the normal tan base color and then a lot of dark tan. You can see all the dark tan back here, and that's also populated with these cool little olive green leaf pieces. These are some, I think they're relatively new Lego pieces I got from the Lego store on the pick -a brick wall. So I got those here, and they look really good mixed with that dark tan. So I'm excited with how that turned out. And then we've got a combination of 
wounded and dead soldiers of the Japanese up here. We've got a couple guys running up. Here's a classic example of a guy with no weapon following a guy with a weapon, maybe hoping that he you know, bites it and he can take the weapon off of him. We've got some more soldiers running up here and we've actually got a artillery gun here. And you can see if I zoom in, we've got one guy loading the breach and one guy handing him a spare shell. So these guys are operating this gun here and this is probably taking shots probably all the way down here. That's probably what most of these larger explosions are from is from some of these artillery pieces back here. We've got another wounded soldier back here that's bleeding out here, trying to find a medic or something, just taking some cover there. And then we've got back over here, we've got another guy on a stretcher. We've got a bunch of Japanese huddled around him. These two guys are carrying the stretcher, and this guy's trying to help him out. We've got another guy down here that's downed. You know, most of these guys are helping each other out, which is good back here. We've got these two guys that are just talking, and one of them smoking a cigarette while they talk and probably figure out what the heck to do. Um, very disorganized. This whole battle is very disorganized and chaotic, which is, I would like to think, is pretty realistic. So we've also got this guy down, and then we've got this kind of little, I don't know what it is, uh, maybe like an ammo stash, weapon stash. So we've got this netting here held up by these poles. We've got a bunch of different crates, weapons, some spare rifles back here. Got a pile of those, and we've got some guys talking here. One guy sitting down, one guy is uh, getting some food, so I thought that was kind of a funny little detail to add. I literally found that little chicken piece last minute, and I figured I'd throw it on one of those mini figures back there. And I really like how we have this larger, kind of curved, um, elongated rock, and then they're using that as kind of cover. And this is kind of their, you know, makeshift headquarters, if you will. So they're using this as cover from the rest of the battle. This is probably the safest spot back here in the whole battle. Everywhere else, there's kind of a line of fire, but back here, it's pretty calm and collective, and uh, this is kind of where I imagine all of the Japanese are pushing from. We've got more of them coming up to the front lines here, once again with their Arasakas, and uh, we got more coming up here. We've got this big explosion here, and uh, you can see I've got some Japanese soldiers that got thrown up into the air. That's always kind of a fun, it's kind of dramatic, but it's a fun little thing to add on mocks. All you got to do is stack up some transparent pieces, and then you can have some Japanese or whatever figures you want flying in the air. We've got this explosion just going crazy right now, and just a swarm of Japanese figures here are just coming down the hill, just coming in, just feeding into this funnel of craziness and we've got these guys here that got shot once again using that technique with the transparent parts on the uh, chests there we got this guy that got shot and it just fell down on that tree we've got another one down here so a lot of guys coming down this hill you know just funneling between the two bunkers and then we've obviously have the Americans that are funneling straight up so it's a pretty crazy battle we've also got a couple more guys back here and here and there's even someone tucked back there that might be one of the easter eggs right there and uh yeah there's a lot going on up on top of this so i'm glad that this part wasn't like dead as far as action goes i think there's plenty of action going on back here just as much as there is up here obviously there's no americans up here because this is kind of the japanese equivalent of the americans beach right you know you've got there are two sides you know, Japanese back there, American over here, and then in the middle where they meet, and it's just going crazy. So I really like how that turned out. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about with this mock that I haven't talked about. You know, we've talked about a little bit of the construction. We talked about this giant wall up here, and then we've also talked about how I assembled some of this. Down here, the beach section is pretty straightforward. It's just a base plate, and then we elevated it just by one or two bricks, and then a plate. One thing that I have done in pretty much all my beach landing mocks is I do this texturing. So I just take one by twos and I kind of randomly scatter them and it adds this really cool realistic texture. From a distance it looks really good because it's not just a flat plate like a base plate. And you can see that throughout all of this. It's just adding some texture, making it more realistic, making it look like it's roughed up sand. And uh, you can see throughout all of this I also added um, you know, a combination of dark tan olive green there's actually some dark orange reddish brown all sorts of different colors to try to make this pop and get away from that just base color being the normal light tan so you can see like i said lots of dark tan lots of other colors and whatnot so that's pretty much it for the mock like i said 
over 200 minifigures, well over 50,000 pieces, I'm for sure. And we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine vehicles. And then we've also got, obviously, we've got like two heavy machine guns for the Japanese, one artillery. We've got, you know, multiple M2 machine guns for the Americans. And I think this is a pretty even battle as far as minifigures. I think I made roughly the same amount of Americans and Japanese. Obviously, we do have a handful of Japanese down here that are not in the direct battle, but minifigure wise, it's split pretty evenly. Like I said, once I take this mock apart, I will be setting all the minifigures aside, counting them, and then we will be packaging them up. And I need to count them because, like I said, these will be individually numbered. So let's say there's 100 Japanese and 100 Americans. I'll write one through a, one out of 100, two out of 100, three out of 100, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you guys will know how many minifigures were made. And once these sell out, they won't be restocked. So obviously, this is the authentic mock minifig. So I wanted to make that very clear. This is the best way to directly support me. And my channel is through my business, BrickTactical.com. So if you guys want something, you know, a little bit of my YouTube history, that's a good way to support me and get a cool minifigure. That literally, any of those minifigures, you could buy a Japanese figure and it could be this guy. It could be this guy. It could be that guy. It could be any of these. Same with Americans. So that's what's kind of cool about it. I've never really done that before in the packaging and all that. So I'm really excited to do that for once. But... I'm really excited with how this mock turned out. A lot of you guys around a year ago, like I said, I started this February of 2021. A lot of you guys back then really wanted me to do Hacksaw Ridge. And I hadn't seen the movie at that point. And I watched the movie and I was like, all right, let's go ahead and do it. A lot of you guys wanted me to. So we went ahead and did it. And I think we did a pretty good job. So I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say in the comments down below. I'm going to go ahead and cut to one last clip and we'll wrap this video up guys all right guys that's gonna do it for the finale of hacksaw ridge and lego guys thank you so much for the continuous support over the past year plus of building this 45 episodes like i said 200 minifigures over 50,000 parts hundreds of hours of my time building this filming it editing the videos uploading the videos replying to comments talking to you guys on instagram discord all that stuff so Thank you so much for all the support on this mock series. By far my biggest mock to this day as far as height goes. Sinai Desert was technically twice as big, but this is the tallest mock I've done. Probably the most minifigures I've ever used as well. So guys, like I said, if you want a minifigure from this mock, from this video, go ahead, check them out. Link in the description. We've got the U.S. Army and the Japanese soldiers. These are going to be signed by myself. And like I said, once I take apart the mock, I'm literally going to pick up the minifigures and throw them in the packaging here, and they're on the website. Once they're sold out, they're sold out. So just letting you guys know, that's the best way to support me. And I just want to say thank you guys for all the subscribers. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for finding the channel and watching this video this way through. We are almost to 100,000 subscribers, guys. I'm filming this, and we're about to hit 92,000. So I'm like I said, I talked about this in my last video, but I'd like the next mock series to push me to 100,000 subscribers. So this is the video where I want you guys to let me know what you guys think of the mock. You know, tell me your story. I read some comments on the last video. They were really heartwarming about you guys telling me like, hey, I've been around for the past year watching this every week. I really appreciate all the support and effort you guys, you know, are giving me to do this. So it's just nice to read the comments. Let me know what you guys think of this mock series. We'll be doing a separate video in the next couple weeks of talking about my next mock series. So save those comments for that video. But like I said, let me know what you guys think of this mock. I think it turned out pretty good. And um, like I said, check out the minifigures. Link in the description. Make sure you guys subscribe. Like the video, comment down below. You do those three things, I'll be giving away two of those minifigures completely free. So do that. Share the video with your friends. This mock took me a long time, so I want to get as much exposure as I can. But thank you guys once again, and I will see you guys next Sunday for another video. So stick around just so you guys can see what that is. All right, guys, yeah. peace out. Uh, yeah, I'm working 18s, everybody knows me. Good luck keeping up, I'm doing me. Doing so much, my friends never see me. Now I'm living my life, yeah, it's all me. Never change up, yeah, this is really me. I'm not sorry if you don't like what you see. Can't change now, this is who I be, yeah. Can't change now, this is who I be, yeah. All the work that I've run and never harmed me. Skipping social events 
all through my teens Just to go back home and grind my teeth Never cared about friends, they weren't on my team